The one thing you have to appreciate with cryptocurrency is this, they're new technology, right? It's disruptive innovation that's come to play and it's only had a short history, okay? But it's a very powerful history. Hi, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to our continuation of our discussion regarding personal finance. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is give you my perspective on cryptocurrencies because um, I've had a few people ask me about uh, what my take is regarding cryptocurrencies and where I think that stuff is going. And I've had some history with uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin specifically. Uh, so I'm going to give you my take on it. Okay. And it's, this is sort of a continuation of our discussion on personal finance because as, if you've been following that work, um, as you know, we've put out a video talking about five of the things we should keep in mind when it comes to investing, when it comes to um, taking a look at a system and deciding to participate in that system. Uh, we put out a video sort of expanding on one of those topics, uh, which was taking into consideration your timeline, your time frame, And then we kicked that off uh, directly into uh, how computer power, how technology is playing out in our current specific, in our current economic system specifically related to automation right and what we're going to do in the next video is continue that discussion sort of in depth and try to create some visuals as how we can think about our current economic system as it relates to currency and the types of systems that we decide to participate in and um, invest our time energy or funds in right and in that video, in the next video, what we're gonna do is specifically focus on different types of trade, uh, different types of commerce that can take place specifically related to currencies, right? And we're gonna create a visual for that. And in that discussion, we're gonna talk about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, but I didn't really want that uh, video, the next video to be hijacked by that discussion uh, because it is important, but, um, what we have to keep in mind is that's just one option available to us, right? And since a lot of people have been asking me uh, for me to give my take regarding cryptocurrencies, um, I thought I'd put this little short video together. Now, I'm going to give you my disclaimer again, right? This isn't financial advice. Um, so, you know, take whatever I say with a grain of salt. I've just had some history with Bitcoin and I've written, I put out two articles in the past giving my perspective on Bitcoin, okay? So I thought I'd follow that up with a sort of a video, short little video discussion on it, okay? Um, as far as the disclaimer goes, um, my history with Bitcoin is basically, I did a little bit of mining in 2010, 2011, and I followed the progression of this disruptive innovation really because as we've talked about in one of the asmr videos asmr math videos disruptive innovation is sort of technology that comes into play that shakes up a certain shakes up different systems right and cryptocurrencies is something that's come into play and it's really shaking up our current economic system in in a big way and it's going to continue to do that in a big way, okay? Uh, for those of you who think cryptocurrencies um, might be thinking cryptocurrencies are a short-term thing. They're not a short-term thing. They're going to be around for a very, very long time, okay? So I did a little bit of uh, Bitcoin mining in 2010, 2011, and I followed the progression of Bitcoin. And in 2013, I put out a little article, uh, and I titled it The Bitcoin Bubble. Or is it two charts, historical, historical price movement and the conspiracy, right? And in 2013 was the first time, well, that wasn't the first time, but um, well, it, it was if you're talking about the thousand dollar mark, but it was um, Bitcoin did a huge move up, right? It went, and in that article, I sort of, um, copied and pasted uh, sort of discussions that I found, found on different forums to preserve those things uh, as part of history because, um, you know, there are, 
the internet sort of being scrubbed of certain types of information. So I wanted to preserve uh, two little bits of info that I came across and I gave my perspective as an introduction, right? So in 2013, when Bitcoin hit 1200 plus, right? It made a huge move up for a number of weeks and the chart looked crazy uh, on a log scale. It was, as it, was, it was exponential growth, right? So I put out a little article mentioning that now that Bitcoin had hit $1,200, uh, I was recommending that people liquidate, uh, sell their Bitcoins, right? Um, and I mentioned in that article that this wasn't sort of uh, a critique on how valid Bitcoin is as a, as a form of currency. It was just my take that Bitcoin had reached bubble, the price had reached bubble status. And in most bubble, whenever something reaches a bubble uh, status, it's not, a, you know, if you're active, it's not a bad idea to sell, right? Because usually when it hits a bubble, bubble level, uh, what you can do is wait for the bubble to pop and then you can buy at a lower price, right? So that article is actually, that piece is well worth reading, right? It's just a little short intro on why I was, uh, well, why I gave the recommendation to sell. And uh, I found some info online that I thought was worth uh, preserving. So I preserved those two bits of info in that article as well. One of them was basically the price movements. And I don't agree with everything that was said in the text that I that I preserved in that uh, piece that I put out. But one of them was basically did a good job of uh, showing how the price of Bitcoin had fluctuated over the last few years up to 2013. And, you know, it gave, it mentioned that, you know, this person who had posted this uh, this information would hold until Bitcoin had to had you know he mentioned that Bitcoin still had legs and it would, could go up to two thousand three thousand. For me, twelve hundred was the peak, and I mentioned that I was recommending that people would sell and and people. Uh, there was a fair bit of comments and. Uh, stuff that I got and a lot of people were saying that I was crazy that Bitcoin was going to go to the moon, it was going to be a million dollars and whatnot. And it was still a possibility. Uh, but to me, I explained why I thought I had reached bubbles, bubble levels and why it was a good idea to sell, right? And then there's a little bit of other info that I found online in a, in a forum that it's basically related to conspiracy of what Bitcoin is and what cryptocurrencies are and where the technology came from. And it's worth reading if you want to know that part of, uh, I don't want to say history because it's not set in stone yet, but that part of the game. And in that person uh, also, you know, all three of us basically, my info, the two people that have, cut and pasted or took that their info and preserved the information all three of us uh, were in the mindset in that piece that Bitcoin is not going to go away okay and then in 2014 I put out another piece mentioning that uh, I titled it the frag fragmentation of Bitcoin community begins after the collapse of Mt. Gox uh, and second markets wall street exchange proposal okay and at that point bitcoin had come down to i believe it was around 500 dollars or so 550 dollars and i mentioned that i had recommended that people sell up sell when the price was at 1200 plus and then this little piece i mentioned that i'm uh you know if people were interested in playing the game again uh, that I would, if I was into buying Bitcoins, I would have bought Bitcoins at $500, $550. Couple of, I, I mentioned that I would buy two Bitcoins at $500 or $550. And I mentioned that I'm not going to be participating in that market. Uh, okay. Uh, and I gave my reasons, well, some of my reasons, okay. 
So as far as the disclaimer goes, those are uh, two articles that I've written that if you're interested in uh, cryptocurrencies, you should take a look at because it preserves a little bit of history and it gives you my take on what's going on. Um, so that's part of the disclaimer. The other part of the disclaimer is as of right now, mid-July 2007, I'm not holding any cryptocurrencies. So I'm not here to hype anything okay i'm not here to uh, uh to promote anything i'm just here to give you my take on it okay so there is no conflict of interest from my part trying to convert people to be cryptocurrency users and uh take some of their funds and put them in a different basket right because it's pretty important to have your funds in more than one basket in these times and that's something we're going to talk about in uh, the next video right so you know long-winded uh, sort of discussion on cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies are basically a way that we can conduct business transfer wealth from one location to another location with privacy and securely okay so cryptocurrencies are just basically i don't want to say use the term banking right because i'm pretty sure banking has some legal definitions associated with it right but cryptocurrencies are disruptive innovation that have come into play that have solid mathematics behind them right which makes them secure form of communication and it's a way to transfer wealth, to send funds from one location to another location, to do business, right? Globally with anonymity, with privacy. Because what's happening right now, since I guess at 2000, really, that's when things really started to play out um, in our current economic system, where the cracks in the system were really showing themselves and then one of the cracks broke in 2008 right and when 2008 happened um, a huge part of the business community did a double take right huge part of people that were invested in the um, in our current economic system that that is transparent as transparent as uh, it pretends to be right or we think it is all of a sudden people realized that there was huge cracks in the system so there was a mad scramble to provide alternate forms of finance alternate forms of doing business and cryptocurrencies is one of these systems that has come into play and digital currencies uh, i can call them digital currencies they've you know it, historically you can t read up some of the history on it it's pretty um, it's pretty transparent but there is cryptocurrencies have or uh, digital currencies have been in play for a couple of decades now two or three decades now right but it's just recently that because of networking we've been able to come up with systems where they're decentralized which is the key to cryptocurrencies right it's not one location that controls the flow of information it's a network where different nodes are in play right and copies of copies of copies of basically it's a technology called blockchain where um, it's sort of a system mathematically where it's it's code where fraud has basically been eliminated in transactions in the ledger system right so bitcoin is a ledger system where it keeps track of where funds are being transferred from one location to another location where both parties or more parties can maintain their anonymity and maintain their privacy right so if i wanted to sell you something and i didn't want to do it uh, where there was a paper trail of you buying whatever it is that you're buying and me selling whatever it is that i'm selling then we could definitely do it 
through cryptocurrencies. And this isn't something novel. This isn't something new. People have wanted to be able to do trade, to do commerce privately forever, right? If you ever bought something on eBay, eBay gives you the option to have the option listed as a private option where people can't see who's bidding on them, right? Um, and that's, I've participated in some of those auctions as well because sometimes you don't want to see who are the participants, who are the people bidding on those items that you're bidding on, right? So privacy is a huge issue in our current economic system, in our current political system, right? Because after you've taken care of everything that you need to take care of in your society, in your community, with whatever system is in play, whatever governing system is at play, then everything you do personally, privately, should not be under the lens of the government or any corporation so they can take it apart and see exactly what it is that you're doing if it is none of their business, all right? So that's where cryptocurrencies come into play. Um, I'm sorry if I'm not going into the mathematics of it because I would have to do a lot more research and read a couple of books and really get into um, the code behind the algorithms of blockchains and how this is done, right? And there's a lot of different cryptocurrencies at play. It's not just Bitcoin. There's, I looked this up um, when I was first getting into this, there was a handful of Bitcoins, right? Right now there's like 700 plus, um, or there was a handful of cryptocurrencies. Right now there's like 700 plus cryptocurrencies, right? And some of the cryptocurrencies offer certain type of ledger systems which are certain types of code certain types of conducting business that is not available through bitcoin right there's a couple of them that are coming out or more than a couple coming out that are specifically geared towards um, companies doing business right not on an individual basis but they offer contractual contractual agreements i haven't looked looked into this too far right i've just read the headlines and read some articles okay so there are different types of cryptocurrencies at play okay bitcoin is not the only one it just happens to be one of well the first one that was able to implement it um, in a rapid way where it got uh, where, where it got a lot of users and it was basically rolled out in a way where it became the dominant form of the of cryptocurrency right uh, for a while now and that's being sort of challenged right now there's secondary tertiary and multiple other cryptocurrencies in play okay um so as far as cryptocurrencies go uh, they're not going away they're uh, their form they're they're embedded themselves within a short few years like really within the last 10 years less than that nine years eight years they basically embedded themselves within our current economic system and their market cap is going to continue to grow there will be hiccups along the way both legally and technically because there are some technical issues associated with cryptocurrencies with the different types of cryptocurrencies and there is a lot of legality associated with this as well because certain places in the and the world are looking at um, regulating cryptocurrencies as currencies. Certain places are regulating cryptocurrencies as if you're making any gains, uh, profit in trading cryptocurrencies, they're looking at, at that as capital gains, right? And, you know, they're coming to play even in countries where that are trying to eliminate cash within their system, right? And as soon as cash is eliminated, from any economic political system then anonymity is is gone right privacy is gone if there is no option of doing things with cryptocurrencies right if you get rid of cash within a society and there is no other option than to use banking systems and systems that are totally transparent to any government or corporation then you have no privacy and when you have no privacy that's a road that leads to very 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 dark places right because the first um, the first thing we have to appreciate and that's one of the reasons 
cryptocurrencies are taking off in a huge way, huge way, and they will continue to be uh, a major player uh, in our not just economic system but our political system and our societies is because we need to have privacy because privacy is the directly related to liberty freedom to anonymity to doing whatever it is you want to do as a human being as long as you're not hurting anyone else right as long as long as you're not forcing your opinions on anyone else okay so for all of you who've been asking me to give you my take on cryptocurrencies um, there isn't really much to say other than cryptocurrencies or form of transactions that are going to be around right for those of you wanting to know when you should buy in and when you should sell cryptocurrencies i can't give you that advice i can't you know i'm not here to give you financial advice on a short-term basis i'm here to give you my perspective on how I think our current economic and political system is playing out the one thing you have to appreciate with cryptocurrencies is, is they're new technology right it's disruptive innovation that's come into play and it's only had a short history okay but it's a very powerful history right they will be around okay they're not going away but there are obstacles in play and the other thing you have to keep in mind is irrelevant of whatever system you think is a valid form of uh, transaction valid form of economics right valid form of business everything is prone to reach bubble status right we had a real estate bubble in 2000 and building up to 2007 2006 2007 2008 right we talked about that or we wrote about that i wrote about that uh, when i was doing articles right there was a bubble the bubble popped right it doesn't mean investing in real estate is a debunked uh, or not a valid form of investing it is valid right but do you really want to buy during the peaks of the bubble or do you want to buy during the troughs or somewhere in between right do you want to buy when prices are rising or do you want to buy when prices are falling right some people a lot of people uh, are looking at the real estate market right now and it's a valid form of investment 100 right however is it bubble levels right so when you're thinking about cryptocurrencies what you have to consider is are you buying at peaks and will you be able to hold out in volatile times where the price might drop 90 percent really where it might drop 90 percent and then come back up again right or 80 percent or 50 percent are you in it for the long haul are you in it to make sure you don't have your eggs in one basket basket in one economic system and you want to participate in different types of economic systems right that's what you have to consider uh, that's what you have to keep in mind before you look at any type of investment right any type of commerce any type of system and cryptocurrencies is no different okay um, let me know if you want to talk about this a little bit further um, I can't get into the mathematics of it because I haven't done my research into it uh, properly anyway to be able to do a full discussion on the mathematics uh, the algorithms behind cryptocurrencies um, because I'm not a coder uh, I like my mathematics uh, and I like uh, uh, I like my, my politics and cryptocurrencies uh, sort of merging of the two right uh, politics and economics combined with mathematics offering us a new way a sort of a disruptive uh innovation and giving us options as opposed to putting all our eggs in one basket in a basket in our current banking systems which are uh, uh, quite fragile right now to say the least 
uh, and their future is uh, uh, very volatile um, and will continue to be quite volatile for quite some time, some time to be and if you're not uh, if you can't hold out through that volatility in cryptocurrencies as well as our current economic system then um, you need to probably rethink your personal finances and make sure you can ride the wave uh, that most likely is coming